Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Richard Goldstein, Chief of Podiatry here at Pascag Valley Medical Center. I'm also the Medical Director of the Wound Care Center and our Hyperbaric Oxygen Medicine. When people think about wound care centers, they have an instant reaction to think of diabetes. Diabetes and wounds often go hand in hand together, and for the most part, they're right. A large percentage of our patients at the wound care center are diabetics. Why do diabetics get so many wounds? Why do diabetics have problems with their feet? That's something I'd like to explore a little bit today. On our first diagnosis of diabetes, we have this reaction where, oh my God, I can lose my leg or I can lose my foot or a toe. We all know someone, our grandparent, a family member who has had an amputation due to diabetes. And when we get that diagnosis, it's a very scary, scary thing to happen. So I'd like to talk today about why that happens and some strategies we can use to make sure that it doesn't happen to you. What about diabetes affects the feet so badly? Well, there's two major systems in our body that are affected by diabetes that could affect your feet. One is neurological, and the second is circulatory. Neurological, and when I talk about neurological symptoms, I don't mean motor nerves where you're walking or your coordination. I mean your sensory nerves where you're gonna feel vibrations or pain in temperature or sharp dull the sensations that help protect us against injury. Often in diabetes, these are decreased and people develop something called neuropathy or the absence of sensation. Dia neuropathy has, has a lot of different stages. It starts initially as something who might be hypersensitive or painful and then can go to the total absence of pain where you do not feel anything. The second thing I'd like to talk about is circulatory. Circulation in diabetes affects things differently. If we remember that our feet are the furthest away from our heart, that's the most that blood has to travel from the heart all the way down to the tips of the toe. That's a long distance. And with diabetes, we get particularly arthrosclerotic or clogged arteries at the smaller vessels. As we go away from the heart, our blood vessels get progressively smaller. Up in the aorta, they're larger. In the leg, they're larger. Down in the knee, they're smaller. And by the time they get to the toes, they're very thin. If those arteries get blocked, there's a lot less that can be done. If the arteries up higher get blocked, there are strategies and things that can be done to help open up those arteries, but not so much at the tip of the toe. That's when gangrene can set in and then we have a difficult situation. I wanna take the example of something simple. We've all bought a new pair of shoes and maybe have worn them and they're slightly ill-fitting. After a little while of wearing that shoe, you might feel a blister developing, an irritation, and what can you do? You can stop, shift your shoe, try to make it better, or even take those shoes off and change shoes altogether. Now think about the fact that you're a diabetic with neuropathy and you don't feel the simplest Terry irritation. Olsen, please dial An irritation Olsen, An irritation as simple as a blister inside a shoe worn all day long when you take that shoe off at night you can have a full on wound. Now we have a difficult situation. So obviously, the best thing to do is not let it happen in the first place. That's a simple diagnosis, but how about someone who in the wintertime has to put a heater closer to their feet to stay warm, and they don't realize their feet are so close to the heater that they burn the bottoms of their feet? Or someone who's walking on a carpeting and steps on a sharp object and it gets embedded in the bottom of their feet and they don't feel it for days on end. These are all things that I've seen not only in our private practice, but in the wound care center. I'll ask you a question. What do you think is the most common thing for a type one diabetic to step on and lodge in their feet? We'll go over that as if anybody has any comments in the comments section later, and we'll give you the answer in a little while. So we have circulation and nerves. When you have each one of them independently, they're bad enough. 
But when you have them together, that's a recipe for disaster. So what are the things that we can do? Well, the best thing to do, the most important thing to do, the first thing that you have to do is get your blood sugar under control. You and your healthcare professional, whether it be your primary care doctor or your endocrinologist, have to get your blood, test, blood sugar under control. You do this by taking your medication properly in the way it was prescribed. You communicate regularly with your physician and your entire medical team. And keeping your blood sugar under control is a, a work in progress. It's constant adjustments, and you always have to get monitored and tested. And that's the best and singular, most important thing that you can do to prevent these things that we're talking about from even happening. The next thing that you can do is exercise. Keeping yourself in good shape, exercising lowers your blood sugar and keeps you in good fit shape where you don't tend to get injuries where on a diabetic they might not heal as well. So the most important thing is communicating with your healthcare professionals, your entire medical team, and keeping yourself in good shape. But let's say you do get a wound, and let's say you have to address it. We have advanced techniques at the wound care center that help people heal, different than we've ever had before. We have much more success in healing people to full restoration of their normal function than we ever have before. We have hyperbaric oxygen chambers. Here at Pascac Valley Medical Center, we have two active chambers where we dive people in hyperbaric oxygen and we put pure oxygen into their body to help heal wounds. And studies show we have phenomenal results. We also have advanced wound care techniques like skin substitutes and the like. Um, we can take skin grafts or uh, synthetic skin grafts that we put on wounds that help grow normal tissue and heal. We have great referral systems where we can send you to vascular, uh, vascular doctors or neurological doctors. The wound care center here at Pascac Valley Medical Center is a comprehensive facility. Additionally, I want you to understand that it is not only diabetics and wounds that present problems in diabetic feet. Things like bunions, ingrown toenails, the simplest things can turn into a large problem in the diabetic foot. I want you to be extra careful when you go for pedicures or use over-the-counter medical products because they're not always safe and indicated for a diabetic foot. Again, working with your healthcare professional is the most important. I like to see my patients with diabetes at least two times per year. What does this do for me? Well, it gets me to see in real time anything that's changed. Every six months, I can make a determination if there's something different than the previous visit. We can watch our studies, watch our tests, checking your hemoglobin A1C and all of your diabetic per her parameters. We do an extensive neurological exam each visit and circulatory exam each visit, and we can notice subtle changes and act on them quickly. And when I say at least two times a year, that, that's at a minimum. I often see my patients up to three to four times a year. And that gives us even more of a clue into checking on systems and th seeing things that change and addressing them immediately. But beyond you coming for your regular visits, I leave it up to you to notice anything on your feet. And within 24 hours of any issue, I want you to call your podiatrist. I want you to address any issue head on and quickly. This coronavirus that we've had over the and pandemic for the last five or six months, I've seen a lot of people scared to come into the hospital, ignoring their general health. Well, I want to tell you, we cannot do that. The results of, of ignoring things are too costly and tragic. I want to tell you at our uh, Pascac Valley Medical Group. We've taken extra precautions to keep you safe. We are open full time at our Pascac Valley Medical Center's wound care center. We are actively seeing patients on a daily basis under strict protocols to keep you safe and healthy. But it is so important for you to call on us to seek advice if you have any concerns. So in closing, I, I just want you to 
take care of your feet, take good care of things, address things head on, keep your fasting blood sugars under excellent control, work with your professionals and your entire team to do that. And if you have any problems, any concerns, address them head on. Let's check and see if we have any questions. Shannon? I'm going to ask you to work with your diabetic doctor uh, on that. Um, as a podiatrist, although we delve in that, every diabetic doctor wants to keep their patients at different levels. But generally keeping your hemoglobin A1C under 7 is, is a, a, a standard of care. But again, I, I'd ask you to work very closely with your endocrinologist or primary care doctor to see what your normal is. I know people are very excited about converting their insulin intake using the pump, uh, and that's just something that's getting better and better, and their fasting blood control has been better and better with the pump. But again, I'll ask you to check with your, your primary care or endocrinologist. You know, just keeping them um, healthy, always wearing socks and stockinged feet, uh, making sure you're free from any foreign bodies that you might step on, seeing your podiatrist regularly, any buildup of tissue, and keeping your tissue soft and supple with lotions and emollients, being careful not to put stuff between your toes, which could get too wet and you can get an infection from. But best practices are just protecting your feet all the time. By the way, I'll give you the answer to that type 1 question. I see this a lot in my practice. And insulin needles, which are very thin and very small, and often if they drop and you can't find them, you could step on them and they get lodged in the bottom of your foot. And we've seen that over and over again. Are there any other questions? My feet burn. Is that a sign of neuropathy? Yes. Burning and tingling feet are a common sign of neuropathy. And within the world of neuropathy these days, there are great advances. Uh, the vitamins that are associated with L-methylfolate and the vitamin B complexes are showing to stabilize neuropathy and sometimes even reverse neuropathy. And there is a little biopsy we can do as a baseline in the office. It's a little three millimeter punch biopsy that we can check and see the level of neuropathy you have. Uh, it doesn't hurt. And usually what we like to do is test for your neuropathy, and if there is so, we give them a prescription for a medication that would be high in vitamins, especially the B-complexes, L-methylfolate, and maybe six or nine months later, test it again and see if there's any changes. So there's a lot of things on the horizon and being done, modernizing of how to treat neuropathy. Are there any other questions? How can I make an appointment at the Thanks. Um, the wound care center at Pascac Valley Medical Center is open five days a week. Our hyperbaric oxygen chambers are also active and open five days a week. Those have to be pre-certified, and there's only certain conditions and patients that can be dived in hyperbaric oxygen. But you can call 201-781-1530, and that's the office at the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, which is right here on campus at the 270 building here at Pascac Valley Medical Center. Are there any other questions? Well, I want to thank you for your time, and if you have any questions or concerns, you can always reach me, Dr. Richard Goldstein, at 201-666-3900. We're at 452 Old Hook Road, and we're associated with Pascac Valley Medical Center, and that's the Pascac Valley Medical Group, and I thank you for your time.